Whoo, this is where it gets a little tougher. Two buses leave Toledo at the same time and travel in opposite directions. One bus averages 55 miles per hour, the other is 60 miles per hour. After how many hours will the buses be 345 miles apart? So there is uh, this formula, and you probably saw it in science at some point in your life. It's distance equals rate times time. So the way I find it most helpful to do these type of problems is to almost set up like a chart. So I'm going to have distance equals rate times time. Uh, so we have bus number one and bus number two. So let's see what we can fill out here. Um, one bus is going 55 miles per hour, so that is the bus's rate, right? It's going 55 miles per hour, so 55. The other bus is going 60 miles per hour. After how many hours will they be 345 miles apart? We're looking for the number of hours here. So we could say that uh, the time is t, right? Because we're looking for the time. That's our unknown. You can call it x if you want. You can call it whatever. Now, if distance equals the rate times the time, I know that for bus 1, the rate is 55. The time is t. If I multiply those together, in the distance, I could put 55t. Right? That's what you get for 55 times t. Bus number 2 is 60 times t. That would be 60t. Wow. Now this question it tells us that the total distance we're looking for is when they're going to be 345 miles apart. So the distance of bus 1 is 55t. The distance of bus 2 is 60t. When we add their two distances together, we're going to get that total distance of 345 miles. So we're going to say 55t plus 60t equals 345. Whew. Now if we do add those up, 60 plus 55 is 115t equals 345. And then we just divide both sides by 115. We get t equals 3. Now, t remembers the time, and we're talking about hours in this problem. So we're going to say 3 hours. In 3 hours, they should be 345 miles apart. That's it. Now, if you wanted to check that, if you look at the first one, they're going 55 miles per hour. If they're going for 3 hours, 55 times 3 is 165 miles. So bus number 1 would travel 165 miles over those 3 hours. If bus 2 was driving for 3 hours, you would have 60 times 3, which is 180 miles. So this one goes 165 miles, this one goes 180. If you add those up, you do end up getting 345 miles. These are tough. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie. Let's try another one. Now this one says to try, but we're just getting used to this. So let's go ahead and try this one together. Bill begins walking towards Sally's house at a rate of 3 miles per hour. And Sally, zzz, Sally zzz, is walking towards Bill's house at 2 miles per hour. If they live 2 miles apart, how will it be... How will be it take before they meet? Grammatically, this sentence, this situation is a bit of a nightmare. But let's go ahead and at least set up the stuff here. So we got Bill. We got Sally. And we've got distance equals rate times time. Look, look. Let's go ahead and chart this bad boy out. 
Bill, Sally, distance, rate, time. All right. Now, Bill's rate, it says he's walking at three miles per hour. It says that Sally is walking towards Bill's house at two miles per hour. The distance that they're going, uh, well, the time, we don't know the time. So that'll be our unknown. Let's call it T. T for time, time for T. Now they're both traveling at, it's at the same time, right? I guess it doesn't really say, but they're leaving at the same time. So if we were to convert this and into the distance here, we're going to say Bill's distance is the rate times time. 3 times t is 3t. Sally will be 2t. It said that they live 2 miles apart from each other. So if we add their distance, the 3t plus the 2t, it should give us that total distance we're going for. He's, his distance is 3t, hers is 2t, and all together they are going 2 miles. And they're walking towards each other. So we'll clean that up. That would give us 5t equals 2. Divide both sides by 5. Now, fractions, fine. Or just do the decimal for it. That would be 0.4. Now, the time we were talking about here is hours because we were talking miles per hour. So 0.4 hours is kind of strange. You could just do 0.4 times 60 if you want, or um, you could keep it as a fraction, 2 fifths times 60, or like 60 over 1. You can simplify. 5 goes into 5 1 time, 5 goes into 60 12 times, so it would just be 2 times 12 which is 24. So we're going to say equals 24 minutes because we're cool like that. Nice. All right. That was fun. That was a true delight. Let's go to the next type O problem. Uh, same direction travel. Oh, these are the fun ones. A train leaves a train station at 1 p.m. It travels at an average rate of 72 miles per hour. Let's go ahead and start setting up our chart now. So we have train one, and I'm guessing train two. Yep. Train one. Train two. We have distance equals rate times time. <laughs> Yeah, all right. We're charted, baby. All right, train's leaving at 1 p.m. It travels at an average rate of 72 miles per hour. A high-speed train leaves the same station an hour later, and it travels at 90 miles per hour. Uh, it's following the same route as the first train, parallel to the first. In how many hours will the second train catch up to the first train? Okay. So, the time we don't know. But train number one, let's just call it T. They don't travel the same amount of time, though. Here's the deal. The second train leaves an hour later, so it's driving for an hour less. So, if this one is going for T hours, and this one's going one hour less than that, the way we could represent that is t minus one. One hour less. And then remember, distance is if you just multiply it rate times time. So this would be 72t. And the other one, we could kind of distribute the 90 times the t minus one. So 90 times t would be 90t minus 90 times one is 90. Okay, so we want to know when their distances are going to be the exact same, once they've gone the same distance. So we're going to take train one's distance 
and we're going to set it equal to train 2's distance. So we'll just have 72t equals 90t minus 90. Or you can have it like 90 times t minus 1, something like that. Now, usually I would always say to get rid of the smaller variable first, the 72t. And you could do that. You could subtract 72t. But you'd have to put a place filler of 0 there, and that's fine. Because it's the only thing over there, I'm instead going to get rid of the 90t by subtracting it. Oh dear, negative numbers. Oh no. So this would give us negative 18t equals negative 90. No more difficult. We just have to divide by negative 18. When you have a negative divided by negative, it comes out positive. t equals 5 hours. Cool. Um, in how many hours will the second train catch up with the first train? Well, t is 5 hours, which means the first train is traveling for 5 hours. The second train travels 1 hour less. So that would be 5 minus 1, which is 4 hours. So the second train is only traveling for 4. First train is going for 5. If we were like, what time will they catch up to each other? Well, the first one left at 1, and it traveled for 5 hours. So that would be 6 o'clock. Uh, the second one left at 2, and it went for 4 hours. So that would also be 6 o'clock. Once you get into the flow of these, they're not too bad, but the initial thing is pretty tough. Just getting used to the process here. Come on. Next slide. All right. A group of campers and one group leader left a campsite in a canoe. They traveled at an average rate of 10 kilometers per hour. All right. We're going to set up. Well, let's see what our. All right. So we have two groups. We have a canoe and a motorboat. Canoe, boat, and I know a canoe is a boat. We'll remember. We have the distance equals rate times time. OK. All right, the first group traveled at an average rate of 10 kilometers per hour. Two hours later, the other group leader left the campsite on a motorboat and traveled at an average rate of 22 kilometers per hour. Now, they give us, I, it snuck in there. It said that it was two hours later. So the first group, we don't know how long they were going. Let's say they went for tea. But this one's two hours later, so it's less time than that. So we're going to say, t minus 2. Now remember the distance is just the rate times time. So this one, we'll say 10 times t is 10t. This one is 22 times this. I'll put it in parentheses this time. You could also go ahead and just distribute it right there. Uh, and I switched from capitals to lowercase. I don't really know why. How long after the canoe left the campsite did the motorboat catch up to it? So when are these distances going to equal each other? So that'll be our equation. 10t equals 22 times t minus 2. We can solve that equation, no problem. We'll distribute the 22. 10t equals 22t minus 44. We can get the t's on the same side. Again, on this one, I'm OK dealing with negatives, so I'm going to subtract 22 t. 10 minus 22 is negative 12. t equals negative 44. And we'll go ahead and divide. Negative divided by negative is positive. You could go ahead and. Uh, do a simplified fraction. On these problems, we're just, we can go ahead and do the decimal. 44 divided by 12 is 3.6 repeating. Or if it said to round to the nearest tenth, you could say 3.7. So that's how long the first one is traveling for. Uh, how long after the canoe left? 
until it caught up. So the first one was going for 3.6 hours. Or 3.7, I guess. Sorry. I'll just put the bar over it. How long did the motorboat travel? Well, it was two hours less than that. So 3.6 repeating minus 2 would be 1.6 repeating hours. Or again, you can make it 1.7 if you want. That's all good. Ridiculous. These are very difficult. We got this, though. All right, two more. Don drives into the city to buy a software program at a computer store. Uh, because of traffic conditions, she, she averages only 15 miles per hour. On her drive home, she averages 35 miles per hour. If the total travel time is two hours, how long does it take her to drive to the computer store? Okay, let's set up our chart. Let's say to store and to home. Distance equals rate times time. Okay, let's see what they gave us here. So her rate on the way to the store was 15 miles per hour. Her rate on the way home was 35 miles per hour. All right, okay. Now, um, the time. So let's say that total time is two hours. And let's say that it took her T time to get to the store. Um, altogether, it was two hours. So if it took her 30 minutes, to get to the store, and it was two hours total, how long did it take the other one? You'd be like, oh, an hour and a half. Because you would subtract two hours minus how long she was traveling to the store. So we're going to say two hours, the total, minus the time that she was driving to the store. That's the most ridiculous part right there. So now we're going to set up the distance, same way we've been doing. We have 15t here. We have 35 times 2 minus t. And again, the distances are going to be the same because, um, you know, she's going from the same location back to the same location. So she's not taking a different path. So we're going to set the distances equal to each other. 15t equals 35 times 2 minus t. Same, same thing we've been doing. We'll distribute the 35. 15t equals 35 times 2 is 70 minus 35t. We can go ahead and add 35 to both sides. That will give us 50. T equals 70 divided by 50. And that means T equals 1.4. And we're talking about hours here. So the way to the store took her 1.4 hours. Now if it, the whole thing took her two hours total, and the way there was 1.4. What's left for the way home? Well, 2 minus 1.4 would be 0 0.6 hours. Now, I didn't say how long it, it didn't ask how long it took for her to get home, but that is how long it would take. Now, that should make sense. She was going way slower on the way to the store, so it should take her more time. She was going a lot faster on the way home, so it should be a lot shorter. Uh, I think we have one more. Oh no. Aww. It's kind of sad. Uh Jane and Peter leave their home traveling in opposite directions on a straight road. Peter drives 15 miles per hour faster than Jane. After three hours, 
They are 225 miles apart. Find Peter's rate and Jane's rate. We'll set the chart up. We got old Pete and Jane. Distance equals rate times time. It does help to make those sound effects. All right. Here we go. Here we go. So the rate, let's call Jane's rate R for rate. Peter is going 15 faster than that. So if she was going 20, he'd be going 35, right? You just add the 15 to her rate. Uh, let's see, three hours is the time. So they're both traveling for three hours. And distance, we're gonna multiply them. So let's see, this one, Peter's distance, we're gonna say is three times r plus 15. And Jane's distance would be three r. Now they're going in opposite directions. So Jane's going this way for a while. Peter's going this way for a while. And all together after those three hours, their total distance will be that 225 miles. So what are we gonna do with Jane's distance and Peter's distance if they're going in opposite directions? Here's Jane, here's Peter. We're gonna have to add them up together to get that 225 because they're going in opposite directions. So we'll take Peter's distance three times r plus 15. We'll add Jane's distance, 3r, and that's gonna equal our total distance of 225. So this is the first time, I think, where we have not set them equal to each other. So we'll go ahead and distribute. It'll give us 3r plus 45 plus 3r equals 225. If we combine our R's together, 3R plus 3R is 6R plus 45 equals 225. We could go ahead right here and subtract 45 from both sides. 6R equals, let's see, uh, 0, 18, cool. And we'll divide by 6 and we get R equals 30. Now, that is Jane's rate, 30 miles per hour. Peter's going 15 higher than that, so it'd be 30 plus 15, 45 miles per hour. So I forget who they were asking about. Oh, it said both of them. So Peter's going 45 miles per hour, old Janie Cakes is going 30 miles per hour. Not too bad. Not too bad at all.